Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for being here today. Today's video is going to be super fun because I'm going to be reading four wedding romances because I'm getting married this year. It's happening. The save the dates have been sent. The photographer has been selected. The cake flavor has not been chosen but the venue and the date are selected. <laughs> so um, I thought this would be fun because as you re read romance, you learn a little something, even if it's a ridiculous lesson or something silly or something romantic or it's a new date idea, whatever it is, I often end up learning something. Sometimes it's even like a new nickname <laughs> that I want to use. So I thought if I read some wedding romances, I might learn something about the wedding industry or wedding planning or drama to look out for on the wedding day. And so that's what this video is. Um, I've already selected the four romances I'm going to be reading in this video. So let's go over those and then we'll jump into each book individually as I read them. So this isn't like a formal vlog. It's more like I'll check in after I finish each individual romance and tell you what I thought. More importantly, what I learned about weddings in general. <laughs> so the first book is Dial A for Aunties. This is a book that isn't about the main character getting married, but the main character works in the wedding industry. And I believe she's a wedding photographer. It looks like there might be a death that's taken place, but that it also is about like an ex appearing at this wedding. So that is the first wedding romance of this video. The second wedding romance is Queerly Beloved. This seems to be about a main character who is in the baking industry. And I don't know if that means that she is like just a wedding cake maker or if she just works at a bakery, thus making wedding cakes sometimes. Um, but it also just looks like our main character is obsessed with weddings. The synopsis says something about like loving say yes to the dress and loving just weddings in general. So we'll see what it all ends up being about, but I really love the cover. I love when books have cooking or baking or food incorporated. So I think this one's gonna be really good because again, we haven't chosen our wedding cake flavor. So maybe I'll be inspired <laughs> by this book. The third book in this wedding romance video is The Wedding Crasher. This is the second book in a series. I don't know if there's gonna be a third one, but this is the second one. And the first one was The Worst Best Man, which is a book that I read last spring or summer, I believe. Um, but this book apparently is about a main woman who is attending a wedding that she's technically not a part of, like she doesn't know anyone there, but she's asked to join because her cousin is working that wedding. So she goes to the wedding and then something happens where she like hears a conversation or sees a weird moment between um, the bride at the wedding. And then something happens where like the wedding doesn't actually go down. That's at least what the synopsis says. <laughs> so I'm excited to see what this one's about. I remember that the worst best man was really funny. And so I'm expecting this one to be really funny and for there to also be some steam. And I guess we'll see what I learn about weddings from it. <laughs> okay, and then the fourth and final book in this wedding romance video is going to be The Wedding Party. Now, technically, this is the third romance in a series of romances, and I've only read the first one in this series, which is The Wedding Date. Then the second book is The Proposal, which I haven't read, and then we have The Wedding Party, which is this book. Um, but when it comes to romance series, usually the romances are all connected in terms of the universe and like the family, but you can read them individually without really needing the context of the other two. So I think I have enough context, but I really wanted this video to be all about weddings. And I feel like this one has some fun reviews and it looks really good. I believe this is about two 
people who are the best friends of the bride. And so each of them have like bridal party responsibilities and they hate each other. And um, they share like one kiss, which is really dramatic. And they're acting like it didn't happen, but there's like this tension that's bubbling up between the two of them. And then they might end up together. I don't know that for sure, but it's a, it's a romance. <laughs> so I feel like it will probably end with a happy ending, but that remains to be seen. Okay. I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna start A's for aunties and then I'll let you know what you think. And then I will continue to read these four. So here we go. <laughs> okay, I'm back. And I'm here to talk about the first wedding romance on this list, which is Dial A for aunties. I think if you're gonna look at rom-com novels, on a scale where some are super, super romantic with just a touch of humor, and then others are super, super humorous with just a touch of romance. Dial A for Aunties definitely falls closer to the humorous side of things where there is romance, but it's not the center of this novel. The center is the humor. The center is the ridiculous situation that this family finds themselves in, but it is all centered in the wedding industry, which I really enjoyed. So our main character is a wedding photographer and she works with her four aunties in other aspects of the wedding industry. So one of her aunties works on hair and makeup, another one works on the cakes. And so it's just like a family business with all women who work in the wedding industry. And it was really fun seeing all of their perspectives on their individual jobs. But our main focus is on wedding photography because that's what our main character is doing. I just know for myself and with my wedding planning, the photographer and videographer were the things that I was super, super picky about. I mean, obviously I was picky about like my dress because it has to look perfect. Um, but I feel like photography and videography is interpreted in countless ways and how one photographer decides to capture a wedding day is going to be a million times different than another photographer and the asking prices for individual photographers are just out of this world anyway so that was just really that was a really fun perspective to just kind of read about and get more insight into um but overall a is for auntie it's funny but it's ridiculous. And I think that's what you have to remember when you go into it. If you're looking for just like a really romantic rom-com of a book, this one really leans into the humor and it's funny. And I really love the main character's relationships with her aunts. But I think overall it is, I mean, it's like Weekend at Bernie's. Like these, and this is not a spoiler, this is in the description or it's in the synopsis of the book, but like, it's about this family of women trying to hide a corpse during a wedding weekend. So, I mean, it. there are so many hurdles and so many problems and it's fun and it's fast and the situations that the aunts find themselves in are just ridiculous. But I think that if you want a fun book that kind of examines the wedding industry while also just having a more unique central crux of the novel, which is hiding a corpse at a wedding, it's um, it might just be up your alley. So before we finish up with Dial A for Aunties, let's just reflect, what did I learn? What did I learn about weddings through this book? Number one, check to see if any exes work at the wedding venue. <laughs> Second lesson, definitely try to not have any corpses incorporated. <laughs> incorporated on your wedding day because it just proves to be hectic and it proves to be very distracting to the overall wedding day. <laughs> and then the final lesson, and this is actually like a serious lesson, is lean on the women in your life. Lean on your family members, ask them for help, ask them to be involved, ask them for advice, try to get as much knowledge as you can from them. Ask for their strengths when it comes to wedding things. Um, and I think that this book really did a good job with really emphasizing the strength of each individual aunt because it really showed how a group of women can make you feel really strong on a wedding day. So that was Dial A for Auntie. Now I'm gonna move on to Queerly Beloved and I will let you know how that one goes soon.
Okay, I'm back again to discuss another wedding romance, and that is Queerly Beloved, which was super sweet. Emphasis on the sweet, because a lot of it has to do with baking. And so if you're reading this book when you're hungry, just huge warning, it will not help your predicament of being hungry. <laughs> so basically in this book, we have a main character who's in the baking business, and one day she is outed, and her super, super conservative boss pulls her into her office and tells her that she does not support her and that she is no longer welcome to work at the bakery anymore. And so through this, she starts her own business of being a bridesmaid for hire, where she helps brides get through their day with someone completely on their side in their wedding party. It's, I don't, I've never heard of this happening, but it was really fun to watch because you're watching kind of like in 27 Dresses, how the main character in that movie is just kind of like taking care of everything. Like she's just a rock star bridesmaid. That's what the main character does in this. She fixes everything. She fixes cake. She sews dresses. She does everything to make these days really special for the bride. So although that's fun and she definitely feels a sense of purpose and she feels like she's kicking ass at this job, she ultimately is really conflicted because as a queer woman, she feels at odds with being in this very heterosexual and religious aspect of the wedding industry, um, especially in 2013, Tulsa, Oklahoma, where gay marriage was not legalized yet. I thought that was a really, really interesting and just really compelling piece of tension throughout the entire book because she is so at war with herself from loving the wedding industry and also feeling completely alienated by the wedding industry. And I think that the problems that arise with her friend groups and her love life are really compelling. And ultimately the overall conclusion again is very, very sweet. So some of the things that I learned as a bride to be, Number one, I have to figure out a really good cake flavor <laughs> because the main character in this book bakes some incredible fucking cakes. And I was so enamored with these like really unique flavors. We're trying to think of cake flavors that are like so neutral that everyone will enjoy. And ultimately it is our wedding day. And after hearing some of these like really unique cake flavors, I was like, why are we having fun with this? Like, why aren't we making our perfect cake? Not everyone else's perfect cake. So that was definitely one of them. Secondly, I didn't really learn this because I already knew this, but this book really gave me a newfound appreciation for my bridesmaids. My bridesmaids are ride or die Noel number one fans. And I feel so fortunate to have them around me because after reading this book, there's just so many instances where like brides desperately need someone on their side, but because of the politics of family and friends, oftentimes like the wedding party gets swept up in the drama and the politics of like what's expected of them. And I just know that my bridesmaids are so just confident and comfortable in themselves. And I know that they're going to make my day amazing and they're really going to ride for me. And I'm just so thankful for that. So that was more just a reflection. And then the last thing is, in some of the reflections that our main character is having, she's watching these weddings and she's feeling like they're inauthentic. Like it's just people going along with like what a wedding is supposed to look like or is supposed to cost or is supposed to feel like or, you know, whatever. And she's reflecting that like, like for one of the weddings, it's like one of her cousin's wedding and she's looking around like, this is not the wedding she wanted when we were growing up. Like, this is so weird how is this so different from the wedding I know she wants? And so it just kind of taught me that I want to have a really authentically cheesy and romantic wedding and not be sorry for it. I think that I oftentimes get really swept up in like Pinterest trends and seeing like what color palettes are really, really trending right now. And, you know, what kind of dresses all the bridesmaids should wear or what's the overall vibe for the flowers. And I feel like I've had this vision in my head of what I want my wedding to feel like, but then you see the aesthetics online and you're like, oh, maybe it should fit into this category, or maybe this is too over the top, or maybe that's too cheesy. But ultimately I'm a fucking romantic little bitch and I love being cheesy and I love love. And I have so many cheesy little ideas that are 
a little kitschy and a little silly, but I know it's very us and I want to lean into that. And I think that this book was a great example of that. And now I want the yummiest, most unique cake I can think of. <laughs> okay, so that was Queerly Beloved. Now I'm going to move on to The Wedding Crasher. Super excited for it. I think it's going to be quirky and fun and I can't wait to see how it turns out. Okay, I am back again to talk about the third wedding romance in this video, and that is The Wedding Crasher. And the main lesson I've learned is that even though a book might have wedding in the title, that does not mean that the whole book is based around weddings. <laughs> Um, so again, this is a book in a series. So the first one was The Worst Best Man, and then we have The Wedding Crasher, and there is quite a bit of drama right away in the first chapter. And this is in the synopsis, so I'm not spoiling anything, but basically our main character shows up to a wedding. She's not a guest at the wedding. She's just showing up to like help out and like support one of her family members who's working at the wedding. And while she's there, she overhears a conversation that basically reinforces this idea that maybe this wedding is not for love or not for true love. And um, she does something about it. And so after this moment, like first chapter again, very, very dramatic um, and a lot of things happen. But after that, um, the two main characters basically get sweat up, swept up in a fake dating plot. So from there, you're watching these two people fake date. And as you may know from fake dating plots, the fakeness starts to ebb away and true feelings are replaced. Out of the three books I've read for this video, this is by far the steamiest. Um, the steamy scenes were, you know, detailed steamy scenes. If you don't love steam, maybe skip this one. If you want a book with steam, this one has it. And although it has wedding in the title, it's not super wedding focused, but there is good conversation around marriage and like pe people's reasons for wanting to get married or not wanting to get married and the logistics of getting married, stuff like that. Okay, well, I'm gonna go start the wedding party now and I will let you know what I learn and what I think and how much wedding is involved. So let's do this thing. <laughs> Hi everyone, I am back to discuss the fourth and final wedding romance of this video, and that is The Wedding Party. So as I mentioned, this is the third book in a romance series. I've read the first book, which is The Wedding Date. I haven't read the second book, which is The Proposal. I don't think you need the context from the second book to understand, because the second book is only really alluded to maybe two or three times and it's always just kind of like a wink to the readers it's not like they're the the two people from the second book are not like main characters in the third book but ultimately this book is about these two people who are asked to be in the same wedding party for their mutual best friend alexa and the two of them have never really gotten along. They got off on the wrong foot the first time they met. And so they've always kept a distance from each other. And so you watch as the two of them have to be near each other and they kind of are attracted to each other. And then they definitely are attracted to each other, but they still don't like fully trust each other because they got off on a wrong foot, on the wrong foot. And it's just really fun seeing the two of them play with this chemistry and not really know what to do with it or what it means. And so instead of like a fake dating plot, like The Wedding Crasher, this one is definitely more like friends with benefits that they're hiding from everyone. And um, it was really fun. It is really steamy because obviously it is a friends with benefits type of situation going on. But overall, the chemistry is really sweet and I really like how different, but then how similar the two main characters are in unexpected ways. I think they think they're so different from each other and then as you watch them get to know each other, you find that they're actually very similar and they have similar interests and all of those kinds of things. So anyway, 
that's the book. What did I learn from it in terms of wedding planning or wedding things? Number one, I need to book my wedding dress alterations appointment because I continue to forget to do that. I continue to forget. And it is something I desperately need to book. In this book, there's a whole like wedding dress montage where the bride is trying on wedding dresses and the people working are like, okay, like we need to get this order in so you have time to get your dress in time. And it just reminded me that I desperately need to book that appointment. So that's one thing I learned. Second thing I learned, because our main character is in the fashion industry, she's like a personal stylist, she was talking about what to wear to a wedding like what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, and trying to communicate that with guests. And that reminded me that we need to do the same thing. I've seen this new trend going around where like you make a collage of the overall outfits and dress code you're going for with your wedding so that on your invites or like in on your wedding website, you can like show people what you're hoping they'll wear um, so that if you're like, hey, it's semi-formal and then someone's like, well, does that mean I have to wear a tie or not? If they go look at your collage and all of the people in your collage are wearing ties, then you're like, oh, okay, I need to wear a tie. So I think that it's just helpful for guests and it's like a big thing right now. And then after reading that scene in the book, I was like, okay, I definitely need to get more clear with what I'm hoping people wear to the wedding. Anyway, so that is the video, my friends. I read four wedding romances. I feel like I learned a lot about wedding parties, about wedding cake flavors I might be interested in tasting. Um, and just like leaning on the women in my life because again, I do feel like oftentimes I don't wanna inconvenience anyone, so I don't ask for help. And then that ends up making people feel like they're not included, which is never my intentions. I would actually love all the help I can get. And after reading a book like A is for Aunties at the beginning of this video, it was really cool seeing the main character lean on the women in her life in a really substantial way. And then again, like with the wedding party, that happens as well. So anyway, this video was really, really fun to do. If you're interested in a part two, I already have purchased two other wedding romances I wanna read, but they felt like more serious and less rom-com. So I would love to read them in a video. If there's another subject, right? Like if there's another type of romance you'd like me to read, or another genre of books you'd like me to read for a complete video, I would love to do that because this gave me purpose this week. <laughs> so anyway, that's the video, my friends. I hope you had fun and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.